everybody, CW here. I got a quick little requested video to do. I am honored to be the part of Chris by the Chris at the 740s reloading chat he started for beginner reloaders on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. And uh, I will put a link to his channel in the description so that uh, if anybody's interested, they can get over there and see. But last week we talked about priming system, primers. Um, ways to install primers. Something that goes along with that, and it's something that we're going to talk with on that chat, but I got a couple requests from a couple of my viewers to talk about crimped primer pockets. What, what you can do to remove a crimped primer pocket. Now, there's crimped primer pockets and there's staked primer pockets. Uh, they're pretty similar. You handle them the same way um, for the most part. Uh, staked primer pocket is just that. There's usually three or so pricks, punches, that hold the primer in. And I've got one right here. Let's see if I can find it without knocking all these over. Here we go, right here. And let's see if I can zoom in on this for you and have it focus. I'm hoping that that's going to focus because I can't really see to tell you if it is or not. But I think you can see the little bitty pricks on three, I think it's three sides. That's a staked primer pocket as opposed to this here. And I can't tell if that's focused. That's a crimped primer pocket. And they're not just in rifle cases. These are happen to be 223s. They're not just in rifle cases. Here is 40 Smith & Wesson crimped. I've seen 9mm crimped. I've seen 45s. And I've even seen 10mm now. It's not across the board. It's certain kinds of ammo like this here is uh this here is winchester nt and it's it's crimped in the 40. so just to beware it's a not just pistols and some rifle stuff that you would expect to be really isn't let me clean this pocket out a little bit so we can get a nicer look this is a piece of Lake City brass, and it's not crimped. It's not. It's not been crimped. Well, let's see. I'm pretty sure you can see that. So there you go. And this is the go no go gauges that we used in the previous video, and actually that's pretty tight. This is a regular go gauge, so this should fit. I'm pretty sure I got the right gauge. Let me double check that because uh, I could have the wrong gauge, but I'm pretty sure I got the right one. I thought I set these both up. Of course, we're on video, so that's when it's gonna be fouled up. But yeah, yeah, I did it right. This is the this is the gauge, small and large, to show you when your primer pocket is too big, out of spec. So this is the one that shows you when it's in spec. So this shows that this is a really tight, really tight primer pocket. So that's good. We can we can swage that. But that's a Lake City 65. And here we have a, this is one of those Winchesters. And uh, this one's, I've already removed the crimp on it. So I didn't go through and deprime most of these. I wanted to do them with you on screen so that you'll see all the steps. So there's a couple that we've already done. Um, these I know are crimped. These I know are crimped in 308. And these I believed were not crimped, but it looks like they're just really tight. So we're going to swage those as well. Okay. You can 
suede your primer pockets to remove the crimp, or you can cut them to remove the crimp. Here's my opinion on that. I've done them both. I do them both. I prefer to swage. The reason I prefer to swage is because you're not removing material. When you cut a primer pocket to open it up, so let's just see here. Here's a, here's a Lyman tool designed to cut away a crimp in a primer pocket. It just goes in and it removes the material that needs to be removed. It runs on a center, so it shouldn't, in theory, remove too much. It's got a bottom that's flat, so you can't go too deep. And it's got a cutter design that should cut just the offending part, which is the crimped in area. Now, that one didn't really do much of anything because this is just a really tight primer pocket. that's really not crimped as I first thought. You can also take your spaceship. Now, doing this is a down and dirty, quick way. A lot of guys will do it, but you can go too far. So you want to be careful if you're doing this, you don't take off too much material because there it is. It's gone. That material is gone. You can never get it back. But what it does is it opens up the pocket so that now it fits. It's still snug, but snug is okay. I think we're going to take just a little bit more, maybe one more turn. You can see that's all I really did. And there it is. Goes on, comes off. So that primer pocket is now in spec. So that's a that's a Lake City one. So let's take this. This one here is a a different kind of military case. I don't know whose this is, but it's 50, 1951. So let's just deprime this on our universal mighty armory deprimer. And some of these primers are really they're difficult to extract. They're difficult to deprime because that crimp is so, so firm in there. So let's show what we got here, okay? The tool does not work, does not fit. Let's try this one. This is the hand tool. Okay, it is it is cutting on this one. It didn't do much on the Lake City, but it's actually taking a bite here let's see what we've got didn't remove a whole heck of a lot and it's still still too tight so let's swing you over here hold on tight i'm going to swing you over here and we're going to take a look at at this press here this is probably everything in your way let me reset this up and move the camera off that overhead and put on the tripod. So stand by. We can't turn the camera off. <laughs> All right, stand by. All right, we're gonna use a different tool to swage the pocket. And this tool is from RCBS and it's a primer pocket swager. And it comes with a swager for large, a swager for small, a little cup, and I'll show you what this is for. Comes with the die and two stems. You adjust the die so that you're in the middle of the range of the stem, so it doesn't have to touch anything. It's just uh, kind of in the middle of the range when you run this up. So you run your stem up so it's out of the way. Put a case on here, run it up in. It shouldn't touch, it shouldn't bind, it shouldn't cam over, it shouldn't do anything. Screw it down until it touches. It starts to cam over and then back it off three or four turns. doesn't matter. It's not a setting. It's just to make sure that you're not going to touch anything. And then with the case up in there, in the die, all the way up at the top, run this stem down until it touches the inside bottom of your brass. So the stem is running all the way down inside the case and it's touching on the inside bottom. What that stem is going to do is that stem is going to push the case down onto that pin. That pin is slightly flared at the bottom and that is going to swage the primer pocket bigger. 
So there's no stress on the sides of the case, the mouth of the case, the shoulder, anything. All the stress is directly above the primer pocket and in the primer pocket itself. So when we try this, it doesn't, it doesn't go on. So you feed it up in here until it's in the center of the die. And there it is. All the way down. Now it's stuck. You can't get that off there for nothing. You put your cup on there first. That cup is going to bump this off when you push it back. So it pops the case off. Don't make the mistake of doing it without putting that case on your rim because you will not get it off. Now this swager swages a really tight primer pocket. See, our go gauge doesn't even fit. But we know that's swaged and it's it's pretty firm. And I got this adjusted. I got quite a bit of cam over. That's way more than I would use if I was setting up a die. So we're swaged really nice. Now you could take a you could take your rocket ship and just touch this to eliminate that shoulder. And it's probably still not enough to let the gauge in. But that is a that is a swaged, proper swaged cartridge. So let's check out the 223. Let's do this crimped one. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to knock the primer out of it. And then I'm going to bring you over here. And we're going to use a different tool. This tool here, and you saw this in the opening of the video, this is a Dillon 600. And this tool works like this. So all the way up like this is your load function. Your casing goes right on here like this. This stem is designed for 223. Let me get the shadow out of the way. Designed for 223. The stem holds the cartridge, the case rather, so that it stays square and true. Your adjustment for seating depth or crimping power is, is in that stem, the same way it was over there. You adjust this stem so that it sits firmly on the bottom of the brass, and it's going to change for every brand of brass. So do, do this with specific brands of brass and then set up for a different brand of brass. What I've got on here is a makeshift adjustment for 300 blackout. So here's a 300 blackout case. This diameter is designed to be, and I it's just tape, is designed to hold the mouth of that cartridge. Try and put it in there, it won't go because the ram is back towards us. you got to fold the machine up. And then this goes down there, and this sets up to be perfectly centered. Then you go all the way down here and you force it kind of like the cam over we did over there we're doing it over here and we just push that ram into the base of the case open it up flip this lever up take your case off get your gauge and it goes right in so this is a dylan 600 there's a whole bunch of companies that make this. Hornady makes them. I'm sure Lee, Lee makes them for sure. RCBS, you've seen. RCBS has a couple different kinds. The kind I showed you over there just works in your reloading press. They also make a, a bench top one. It's kind of it's kind of identical to this, but it's sideways. So it, everything works sideways. So if you mounted this like this, that would be how the Remington would work. I'm sorry, the RCBS would work. So there we go. I believe all of these blackouts have been um sorry have been uh swaged yeah they've all been swaged this is just a bucket of 300 brass that i've made a while back and it's, most of it's been loaded Pretty certain that everything has been swaged.
but let's take this let's take this tape off here because I can just add it back and let's do a two two three case. I don't know if Dylan makes a a kit now for 300 blackout, but it would be a really good thing if they would, because uh, it's not a problem wrapping this with tape, but when you want to go back or go to something else, this is what you've got to do, and then you've got to start all over, setting it up for 300 blackout again. So we'll just get this tape off here tape residue throw that in the garbage can hit it with a an oily rag and see if we can get some of that residue off there all right now we're set up again for 223 and this is the one that we just knocked the primer out of whoops that that barely fits by but it does fit by so we'll do a different, we'll do another case over there. Now this isn't necessarily set up for this piece of brass, but let's see what we get. All right, we're getting some resistance and, and we're gonna push this down. So you hang this over the edge, all the way down, all the way up. Now people have added springs on here. So they could just go all the way back. They've added springs on here. So this flips the case out for faster, um, faster operation, but it definitely loosened it up. Now it goes in really nice. So let's uh, let's do one of these one of these crimped cases. Stick it over here in the universal. Knock that primer out. Let's check it. Make sure we got a crimped pocket, and I know we do. Yeah, won't go in. Again, we're not set up for this case, so we're gonna take a shot that it's gonna be okay. All the way down, all the way back up there's our gauge goes right in okay there you go this is how i prefer to do it down and dirty i will use the i will use the uh spaceship and i'll show you here like I said, it's just permanently removing material. And if you go too far, you, you can't get it back. Okay, so a couple twists and we cut the primer pocket out. Pull of a lever, we swage the primer pocket back to shape. There you go. That's how I do it. That's a couple of different tools that are available from the cutters from Lyman to the swagers. Here's the here's the small swager tools that that uh, swap in over there on the press for the for the die mounted swaging tool. This is the small and the small pin. This is the part that goes inside on top of your primer, top of your flash hole inside your case. This is where it pushes. So it pushes here and there, and it's it's about like that with the case sandwiched in between. And then you got the Dylan six hundred. Super Swage. And this is what I like. This this is what I've used the most for the most years, and it's the what I like the best. But that's just what I like. You can try stuff for yourself and see what you like. That's about it. I think that explains it pretty good. Leave me any comments or questions in the in the comment bar, uh, comment section there. And I'm happy to answer and help any way I can. God bless everybody. Okay.